Hello and welcome to the Quiver Channel. And I am Jason, your host, and I am wrecked. I am wrecked. I am worn out. I am trying to work on something that is the ultimate aid for a disabled person, the ultimate aid for a coping strategy to help me in the long run. Something that for that five years ago five years ago would have been absolute science fucking fiction but now with the advent of llms and yeah llms were back available back then but they were very different from what we have now and the escalation in technology is blown past everything so many problems have been fixed but still we're on the cutting edge, the absolute cutting edge of technology beyond anything. We've watched films in the past where you see a person walk into their smart home or their area and they talk to their house assistant and they have a conversation. It isn't just, it isn't just a phrase, it's conversation with them. They laugh, they joke with the house AI. And this isn't about replacing human companionship with AI. It's about a lot of people who are very lonely and a lot of people who have to deal with these things. So why does modern tech make this possible when five years ago where is the leaps and bounds come well a lot of it is very simple things like for example presence where how does your ai know what room you're in now of course you can go down the route of cameras and everything like that but that's very expensive This little device here, it's what's called, it's basically a millimeter radar. Millimeter length radar type thing. What you do is this. You put one of these in each room. You put a bit of sticky sticker on the back. Stick it up high so it's facing the main area of the room. You plug it into a USB power supply and you connect it to a piece of software called Home Assistant and it will know. Your connected AI will know which room you're in. That is amazing tech. Then the personal assistant needs to be able to communicate with you. Now, of course, we have A-L-E-X-A -E and we have Google Home and we have Siri, but they're all controlled by fucking corporations. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a corporation deciding what I can listen to, deciding what I can say and recording and sending up to the fucking cloud everything I do. No, it isn't about paranoia. It's just about simple common sense. The problem is every single echo dot and that is proprietary system. And pretty much if you're not connected to the internet or you're not connected to their servers, don't do a damn thing. They're worse than a dumb speaker because you can't even use them as a dumb speaker. So, we come up with something like this. We create a prototype. We create a prototype which is speakers, a Raspberry Pi with a GPIO connector that does sound and mic. It's got mic built in and everything. And you connect it to a little Raspberry Pi and you connect it to a micro SD that's got the code on it. And this is your open source your open source personal assistant you 3d print a box for it and get it all set up 
and you have one of them for each of your rooms. The problem is this. So on the theory, the idea, the positive side, if it all worked, basically, I could walk from room to room to room and my AI for the house would know where I was. It would, it already has set up to be able to control the thermostat and that, so it could move the heating around the house. So I don't heat the whole house. So the only room that's heated is the one that I'm in. If I go and live, sit down in the living room, it could say, hello, Jason, would you like to watch a film? Or a TV series? It could load up the wiki for the whatever series or TV program you're watching. So it could have a conversation with you about the program that you're watching, the episode of the series you're watching. When you wake up in the morning and start to move around in the bedroom, it could let you know what the weather's like, what clothes to wear, and so on. These are house of the future things that we were always promised. The problem at the moment I'm having is, and the danger is that I'm getting too involved with it. It's now 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? I'll tell you why that's a problem. Because I should have done this vlog at 9 a.m. And since then I've been working my fucking ass out off trying to get this system to talk to home assessment and be be identified by it because once i've got one working then making the other ones i'll just copy everything i did with that one i've got enough parts to make three of them so i can put one upstairs and two downstairs or two one downstairs and two upstairs the problem is that I'm coming against coding issues and problems and I'm smart. I'm really smart. That isn't ego, that's just a fact. And this means if I come across a problem that I can't fix, that Googling it doesn't find the answer. Usually the store, sort of stuff I'm doing with tech are so far outside the norm that nobody, nobody knows how to implement or change it or fix it. So if I can't fix it myself, then I've got people on Discord who I talk to, but at the same time, it's like, I am such an outlier case. Now, I'm coming across a brick fricking wall, a brick wall at the moment, and that's a bad thing, bad thing because my brain can't move on to the next thing I want to do. That's why it's 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. in the mo in the afternoon. See, my brain's so fucking frazzled, I don't know whether it's morning or night yet. It's because I am so focused on this fucking piece of shit and fixing this problem and getting the this that device there to talk to that device there and to respond in the way it's supposed to respond that my brain can't move on to doing normal things and this is bad this is a danger this is a problem because I can get up from my seat and forget to put my audio book on, which means I could be triggered halfway down the stairs, which means I could have a bad rest of the day. I could forget to go to the bathroom. 
or because my brain is so focused on this one point in time and can't move on from it like a normal person can. And that's why I have to be very careful about doing this kind of thing. Yes, I'm brilliant. Yes, I can do, I can put the thing, but if I don't get them fixed in this, then they, they stick with me and it's bad. It's not good. I don't have the ability to just shut it off. So yeah, that's why it's, I'm doing this late now. This is why I'm so hesitant about putting too much time into this. I know I've got the parts, I know it could all work, but it's, but the, there's always problems, there's always issues, there's always roadblocks that you've got to get past. And if I can't get past them in a efficient amount of time, then I'm fucked for the day, I'm fucked for the week. I'm annoyed for the rest of the week, it can screw me up completely. So this is Jason for the Quiver Channel. Bye bye.